Hey again everyone, this is Stellar Firefly, and in this video I bring to you how to connect to your GTX Gaming DAISY server, the unofficial version. What's up with this whole unofficial thing? It just means that these methods make use of third-party launcher software, and so if you have any issues when using these methods, then your tech support, if any, has to come from the developers of those launcher apps. That's all it means, really. Having said that, these apps usually work just fine, or otherwise nobody would use them, and they do work well for the most part anyway, as of the making of this video. If you would rather use a method that is fully supported by GTX Gaming, then check out my other video, which is titled, not surprisingly, Connecting to your GTX Gaming DAISY server, the official version. You can find it also in my YouTube channel, or if I did this correctly, just click on the preview below to go straight there. For this video, we'll be concentrating on two of the more popular launchers out there, DAISY Commander and DAISY Launcher. You can grab them by going to their websites, www.daisycommander.com or daisylauncher.com, respectively. For the rest of this video, we'll assume that you've already downloaded and installed whichever of the two launchers that you wish to use. They're both designed to do pretty much the same thing, and that is to simplify connecting you to DAISY servers. The two biggest advantages to using them are... 1. They will, or at least attempt to, automatically detect mods and maps which are being run by a server. This means that you won't have to manually change any of your command line switches every time you want to connect to a different server running different mods or maps. I say that they at least attempt to because it doesn't always work. Most notably, it doesn't currently work with non-standard mod packs such as GTX Gaming's own Overpock Release 2 hybrid. But don't worry, we'll go over exactly how to make it work later in this video. But note that when we customize our launcher to work with these non-standard servers, we may or may not need to remove those customizations for it to work again with standard servers. The second big advantage to using a launcher is that they provide for you a method to more easily download and install different mods and maps. Instead of using your web browser to go to different mod and map websites and downloading and installing them all manually, the launcher takes care of both downloading and installing them for you within a single, simple interface. A lot of players even use launchers solely for this purpose, meaning that they use a launcher to easily grab their mods and maps, but then they use the official method to connect by launching A2OA directly. It's totally up to you if you want to use your launcher for just downloading, or for both downloading and launching. First, let's take a look at the DAISY Commander launcher. When you first launch DAISY Commander, it'll automatically perform a refresh of all servers for you. You can turn this off in the settings if you wish. You can then use the filter text box to find your own server, or any of its other filtering controls on the left, to find any set of servers that match what you've selected. To quickly always find your specific server, you can click on Favorites and add your server's IP and port numbers. That way, it'll always show up in your favorites list. To use DAISY Commander to download and install mods and maps, just click on the Install slash Update at the upper right. Here you can find many of the various mods and maps, and their current installation status. One possibly handy feature that DAISY Commander provides is the ability to install and use an older version of mods and maps. Most players won't need this, but those who do often prefer DAISY Commander for this. The buttons next to the mods and maps will allow you to install, reinstall, or even perform a repair if DAISY Commander believes that the mod in question may be corrupted. At the very top, it even allows the updating of your Arma 2 and of DAISY Commander itself. There are other, more advanced things that DAISY Commander can do, but I don't want to turn this video into a How to Use DAISY Commander tutorial. It also has its share of glitches from time to time, which we won't cover in detail, especially because there's a good chance they may be fixed by the time you watch this video. But there is one particular current glitch that tends to cause a lot of confusion, so even though it may hopefully be fixed in the future, let's take the time to briefly mention it here. After using DAISY Commander for a little while, it seems to eventually reach a state where upon being newly launched, none of the servers listed as your favorites will correctly update. This will show as offline with a ping of 10,000, even though you know for a fact that they're online and working. It's unclear exactly what causes this, but it will happen eventually, and usually fairly soon. Even if you click on the refresh icon next to the server, it'll still show as offline. The workaround to this is to click on Refresh All Servers. Then, while it's refreshing them all, when it eventually reaches the server listed in your favorites, it will show as being alive and online again. The catch is that you can't just launch a server that is showing as offline, because DAISY Commander won't be able to detect which mods and maps it's running, so refreshing all the servers is a requirement. Kind of annoying, but at least it doesn't take long to work around it. 
And finally, now that we mentioned detecting which mods and maps are running, remember earlier what we said about launchers, that they can detect what mods and maps are on a server and then properly launch A2OA with them, but that they don't always work. And remember that we said it doesn't work with a GTX gaming over POC R2 server. The reason for this is because Daisy Commander tries to detect what is running on an Overpock R2 server, but in the end it believes that only the Daisy Epic mod is running. In other words, it doesn't realize that the Daisy Overwatch mod is also running right beside it. To fix this is really easy though. Click on Settings at the upper right, and in your Additional Launch Parameters text box, type dash mod equals at Daisy Overwatch semicolon, and then press the Done button. This adds Daisy Overwatch to the list of mods that Daisy Commander will use when it launches A2OA. Will Daisy Commander ever properly detect an Overpock hybrid server? We could hope, especially because if we mouse over our favorite Overpock server and take a look at all the info in the pop-up, then we can see that not only is the detected mod showing correctly as Daisy Epic, but in the mod string we see that Daisy Overwatch is in there too. So let's hope that someday Daisy Commander will be smart enough to make use of that information. Until then, don't forget to add the mod to your additional launch parameter setting. Alright, enough with Daisy Commander. Let's take a look at our other popular launcher, Daisy Launcher. They're basically very nearly the same, so we won't spend too much time repeating the similarities. When you first launch Daisy Launcher, it'll automatically perform a refresh of all servers. The only difference being that Daisy Launcher always does this, and there's no way to turn it off. So after you've pinged the servers that you care about, you can't tell it to stop trying to ping all the rest of the 5,000 plus servers in existence, but that's not too big of a deal. Just let it run. You can mark servers as your favorite by clicking on the star icon, which will push them up to the top of your servers list. It also seems to attempt to ping favorites before the others, but it seems to have trouble receiving ping info from some servers for unknown reasons, as you can see here. It appears to receive game info, but no ping info, which is very odd. You can double-click these servers to connect to them, but you'll have no clue beforehand if that particular server will be laggy or not, which isn't always a bad thing because you can ignore the ones with no info, unless, of course, they happen to be your own personal server. Clicking on their individual refresh buttons will still fail to acquire their information. It also seems to display cached info, which can mislead you to think that some particular server is available, but when you try to refresh them, they just go dark. When looking for servers, we really don't care about which ones used to be up in the past, but are unreachable now. There are, however, two mentionable advantages to Daisy Launcher. The first is that its download system is a BitTorrent system, which for most people will mean maximum utilization of your available bandwidth, or, in other words, faster downloads. So when you go to the mod section and download a mod or map, it should quickly ramp up to a very fast download, depending on your internet connection. The other notable advantage is that it recognizes a particular hybrid mod in which we may be very interested. That's right, it recognizes Overpock servers and properly launches both Epic and Overwatch mods when connecting to them. So, no need to specify any custom launch parameters to connect to your Overpock server. Are there any notable disadvantages to Daisy Launcher, other than the little nitpickings that we mentioned earlier? Well, there is one that I've encountered that won't affect you if you use only Daisy Launcher. However, if you mix the use of Daisy Launcher as your download slash install platform and A2OA as your launch platform, like we mentioned earlier, then you will need to note that Daisy Launcher installs the Epic mod into a directory called at Daisy underscore Epic 1051, not the default at Daisy underscore Epic. And so anytime you need to specify a command line that includes Daisy Epic, you must change it to dash mod equals at daisy underscore epic 1051 semicolon for it to find the epic mod that daisy launcher installed. Okay, that should be enough to get you up and running. As before, I don't want to turn this into an hour-long how to use daisy launcher detailed tutorial video. If you need more help or support, then feel free to ask in the forum thread for this video to see if others are able to help you out. But it may be best to just ask in the forums for your particular launcher instead. And remember that in the end, if there are issues with the software, then you'll have to bug the developers to fix those up. Thank you all for watching. Please don't hesitate to like or subscribe if you feel so inclined. And as always, good luck, have fun, and watch your back.